Hello YouTube. Sorry we're a little late today. We had some uh, things to take care of this morning and this is sideways choppy grindation anyway. Now we're getting ready for our news event coming up at noon. The setup is clean. We just have a liquidity zone to get through. And that's this little guy here. Um, Make sure I got the right time. I want to grab a screenshot and throw it in the chat here. We have EIA short-term energy outlook at noon. What uh, we have is Powell speaks at 1240. Ah, Powell's getting on the mic. We know what happens when yeah. Powell gets on the mic. Right, and that EIA short-term energy outlook is showing us volatility. It's giving us three bull bars yes. in investing on investing.com. So there could be a, uh, uh, the next you know little while could be really volatile. Absolutely. After the news breaks. And I've also got a, um, a position I'm building in natural gas. And I think that the chart told me before the event told me that this might be a good position. So I'm, I'm looking at UNG. I <laughs> um, was able to grab a little bit more of that position and average it a bit. And I don't normally do that. So I'm a bit bullish on UNG to bounce here. Just my opinion. No, that's not... Uh, not financial advice, but I'm taking a position. Open and clear. I'm not pumping a damn thing. <laughs> um, as far as uh, the other two icons go is uh, Tesla and Amazon. Um, Tesla, like, still qu quite trying to get to that $200 level. Keeps getting bounced down. There's a bunch of profit taking there, but... Let's look at how many times it's knocked on it. Give me one second here. I am fumbling around with too much technology in the background. I'm looking at stone screen too. I'm trying to fumble around too with stuff. So I'll, I'll talk about... Go ahead. I'll talk about Tesla, but... Um, if, if, if you wanted to look at it, kind of pull up your own screens if you would. Look at Tesla on a two-hour chart and zoom way out. You know, give it to where it's like got 30 or 40 days on the chart. And um, if you look at what you're seeing, there's, there's still a key pivot right up there at 207. But where we're at now is we're at a key pivot of 192 that we've bounced off of, right? That's a big range there, and it's got no accumulation between there and 207. So either it breaks over and goes to 182, or it breaks out and goes to 207. At some point, this consolidation is going to come to a head, and it's going to make the move one way or another. All we got to do is be ready for it. Um, on that, you're going to be looking at your 5-minute chart to figure out exactly when to pounce on this thing believe it or not. And knowing where previous liquidity zones are is going to be important as well. These are old. I haven't extended them yet. But that's one, and that's one. If we get in that range, likely going to bear flag and be bearish. Um, the next side is find the new liquidity zone. Where is the selling liquidity? And that's the top of these two bars right here on a five-minute chart um, You know, from the other day. So not yesterday, but the day before, so Friday. So if you want to draw that out, just take your box and stick it on the top of those two wicks and just run it out till today. And know that that's why we're seeing selling every time it gets up to that, that zone. It just sells off. Wow. So, hey, Jeremy, why don't you share your screen? Yeah, I can. I said I'd get prepared for it. Boom. And I'm sorry I missed all the session this morning. I just had a lot going on. <laughs> it's all good. Been we nuts. had fun. Virginia asked one little simple question. She got a fire hydrant of an answer. <laughs> nice. Those are always fun. I think we had some. We had fun. All right, here we go. So... 
there's that liquidity zone you can see it's come up to it yesterday came up to it in the pre-market today and it was up to it Friday we know where the support zone is I mean, I'm just gonna block this one out run it <clears throat> so anytime between now and the next couple days we can see Tesla break out it's got to break one way or another it can't stay here it doesn't want to stay here all right it, it's been knocking on resistance three times now and if we look back that was the new high right so no one wants to go and and sell it here they want to buy it here so our, our current demand zone is so stinking tight it's not even funny it's right here between 192 and 196 but the supply zone is right here the difference is the supply zone is really narrow it doesn't take long to chew through that and this breakout, if it does go up against that resistance and get through it, it's going to go really fast. And at that point, it will be threatening the short legs of my butterfly, which is right here at 205 in the center. And it's narrow considerably because of the volatility size. I only have $5 wide, so I got $5 up, $5 down for my butterfly. If it gets to 205, I've got to close that position if I want to keep profit. So I have a good till canceled order for not quite max profit on that. I've got a good till canceled order at actually uh, 390. Um, the width of that spread is five bucks. Why would I do 390? Well, because they still have extrinsic value. There's still time to the 17th. But if I can close that position sooner, I'm going to take profit on it at that point. And extrinsic value versus intrinsic value is where that decision is made and that's a whole another subject to study that I haven't been really um, talking about with options and I've been talking about the conversions and all the different strategies the simple ways to trade them and that's the one missing piece is you got to know a lot about intrinsic and, and, and extrinsic value to make this happen um, Saying that, the Amazon position I took on where I sold a put spread, took assignment on the short leg, and I still have the long leg, that is literally based on knowing what intrinsic value is. And leaps that are in the money tend to trade at intrinsic value. Extrinsic value actually increases as time gets somewhere between a 30 to 45 day window. Inside of it, um, it shrinks. So it goes from small to big to small on the extrinsic side and then from the intrinsic side when it's in the money it stays the same until price crosses it when you know that piece you can really really make better judgments on when to take these trades and why um, aside from volatility so I essentially made an income selling options on that test or on that Amazon position is nearly equivalent to my my um, half of my investment into it because remember I got to be long 200 shares worth of this position to hold that that long put because I've got to be long 100 shares and I've got to be long that put and both those values change but they oppose each other as the put value goes down the share price goes up as a, as the uh, put value goes up the share price goes down it's, not, and it's actually the other way around the share price affects it it's, that's the underlying but the reason I can hold that position as neutral is because it will never change. One will always offset the other up until it gets to that 45 days to expiration. Then things will start to change. Suddenly that extrinsic value starts to happen. And even though it's deep in the money, it should trade intrinsically, that put will be inflated a little bit. So if I hold that position, regardless of what I do with my long position, um, the put will become a little bit more valuable as it approaches that 45 day to 30 day window and I can go and profit that as well and then still keep 100 shares long. So there's rhyme and reason to why you would take a trade on that and when you have to uh, when you have to consider what intrinsic value is your idea is going to change from I, I want to profit on the movement of the options to I want to profit on the um, depreciation of the options. So when I go and I sell a covered call against that, 
I'm taking advantage of everything on this side of that 30-day window to expiration. In fact, uh, when it was running up to earnings, I went and sold 125 strike uh, February 10th expiration covered call on that Amazon for 195 and bought it back for eight the next day. So I sold it for $195 and bought it back for $8 overnight. That's, that's the thing about options is you don't have to hold them to expiration. You would never want to. You're trading it like hot potato. And someone took a speculative position and bought that option, whether they bought it from me or someone else, or it was traded probably 100 times before I bought it back. That doesn't matter. Someone speculated, and they were on the losing side of that trade big time because they were speculating. And it may have been a part of someone else's spread for all I know. It doesn't matter. But the point is, knowing what that exploited, um, inflated extrinsic value is and knowing what it's really worth is where I was able to make that decision. And even if I got assigned at $125 a share, I've still got 100 shares to back it, plus I have the value of that put. Mind you, it would threaten the value of that put. I might give some back on that put. There was enough cushion there to give me plenty of time to deal with that. So... In the whole thing of trading options, it's not just about buying and selling. Um, it's about knowing how all the little parts work. And like I was saying, knowing how the whole machine works and then focusing in on those little parts that you need to adjust or fix is a game changer. And to maximize efficiency, that's what you're doing with your price action as well. This is why price action and options trading should be hand in hand. The ir irony in this is that um, there's more people paying for services to teach them about options than there are uh, people paying to teach them about price action. But in reality, the first focus should be price action. Options should be secondary because you can't trade one efficiently without the other. So all these little detailed parts that we focus in on with price action and all the little details of options trading it's just a way to focus in on what the big picture looks like. So taking advantage of, of knowing how all the little moving parts work will help you understand and utilize those little shortcuts to much, much more efficiency. That's why I can sit here and draw seven trend lines on a five-second chart and nail price targets in real time all, all day long if I wanted to. It's knowing how the big picture works so that you can take advantage of all the efficiency that's in the little details. Oh, I'm just reading comments in the YouTube channel here real quick. So does anybody have any, anything they, they need to ask about that stuff? Um, and thanks for that that comment. Yes, this, this is live, and yeah, this is this is our normal content, and the stuff we have, you know, on the inside is way, way, way more in depth. <clears throat> so we we tend to go live um, at some point between <laughs> between nine thirty and eleven daily. Um, sometimes we have a lot of uh, detailed stuff that we share strictly with our members. And then we go out on YouTube and kind of show people what's on, what's behind the scenes, what we do as a group. So that's kind of the, the way we go. <clears throat> and it, it, come, it comes around. I mean, there's, there's lots of other content that we put out in the past about price action out on our YouTube channel and, and a whole lot more of it we have inside the group. So just kind of uh, go into that. And I should be reading some of these con uh, these questions uh, to my members here. It's like um, Paul here asked, he says, join late, missed content of price action discussion. And it's, it's out there. We put a lot of it on YouTube. So you know, watch, watch the video again later. We'll leave it up. Um, and then the other question was, uh, what is your max long call or put with regard to days out? And I, I went over that with the intrinsic extrinsic value shift. So that, that's covered there. But essentially we, we give this all day long guys. We, we focus on taking everything we know and, and teaching it, paying it forward. And in the process, it makes us better because we, we learn while we're teaching <laughs> 
that's that's a hard concept. We we um, take what we learn, put it in words, and while we're teaching it, it develops new concepts of ways to look at things uh, for us. So it's it's like we don't know it all, but we we learn it as we teach, and we learn faster as we teach. And that's why we enjoy it so much, and that's why we're you know we're not out there trying to charge a thousand dollars a month for membership. <laughs> no. That's not where the money is. That's not where the value is. We see the value is we all learn to trade together and we all and we get the, the privilege of being able to teach it too. And we're we're here to trade and, and learn how to make money together. Hands down, that's the community value. You you know, I've I've not I've not seen that anywhere else. I'm not trying to toot my own horn or be prideful or, or uh, you know, big headed about it at all. That's just the truth. All right, here comes the liquidity zone for SPY, and that's that 410 cap. If we can push through that, cool, we got some explosive moves ahead to go bullish. Um, Tesla's kind of curling right off that 192 pivot again. I must have dragged that pivot at some point because it's not supposed to be 192.29, it's supposed to be 192. Close enough. <clears throat> There we go, big old bar right through that liquidity on SPY. And we got a little Wu-Tang set up on Amazon to boot, so. This is kind of that time of day where like, um, if I'm building spreads, building condors, or what have you, if I'm going into long positions or the long side of my positions, and that can be long bullish or long bearish, it can go both ways. This is the time of day where I build those positions. The opening range is where I tend to exit those positions and take profit from them. And in a lot of cases, greatly. So, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll never, you know, fully go and, and, you know, blow it up and be like, dude, this is my account balance. I'm not going to do that. I'm not a cocky a-hole like that. But I will sometimes show my, my P&Ls on positions, various positions. And it's it's insane to consider the the percentage there, yeah. and I don't want to have that be misconceived as like I'm blowing smoke up your you know up your hoo ha or whatever. <laughs> I am or it's not super easy. Yeah, and it's not. It takes dedication and simple. Yeah, it, it's simple when you once you've learned it. It's it's like you'll never forget how to do this. This will be as easy as riding a bike. But it's it's like riding a bike with like thirty two pedals, man. <laughs> it's it's gonna take hey, a minute to figure it out. You're absolutely right. Listen, I was away, so I just I just got back. I had a whole bunch of stuff going on. That's why I shut my mic down and everything. Oh, so totally all right. Man. I'm back. Looked like I missed everything. I should have told y'all I was leaving. Dang, y'all could have made money. Yeah, that's it. That's it. We saw the well, we saw the setup coming though. So to that effect, your leaving was the cue for it to break out. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, what we what we come down to is, um, and and Stone, I might I might have to, since it's recorded on YouTube, I, I said a lot while you were gone. I don't know if you were. I didn't realize you were gone, and, and I don't know. If I had you to, no, I had to step away. I had to turn my mic when I, when I set the feet off. <laughs> like I said, it's been a crazy week. So. But my, um, I'm 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 in one of those modes and for me it comes in cycles for some reason i don't understand it but my my brain sometimes is it works real, it works well enough when it's not working well in my opinion but yes. then i have these these moments of like true clarity where i can just like psych cyclically i can come out and just like i i, I i'm profound i i have this capacity you know what i mean defecating while i was away i was and like today and how for the past two weeks actually I've, I've had some really high brain function and it I, I can't explain it. it's just cyclic some days I'm mush some days I'm just really good and I, I'm you know again I'm not trying to be cocky about it uh fortunately for me it timed really well with earnings and dude awesome that's that's been like uh a, a you know a, a whole lot of uh able to pay my bills all of a sudden so this is really good. Did we, did we get some national news? Did a war stop or something? 
I think now, China. That, you know, that's the kind of thing I would think. The China's balloon, uh, uh, man. Overnight, I, they. I thought it was California. I didn't realize it was Carolina coast. I was yeah. like, dang. It's right over there. Yeah. <laughs> I I think there was some uh, saber rattling by China last night, but I don't think it's anything big. So it's like they're the monkey in the room with the elephant and the rhino and uh, the whole gang, but I think and they're the, the monkey. Yeah, and the bear. I got a bear, too. Don't forget the bear. They're the monkey. You yeah, know, but they're a sleeping dragon. That's true. I'm not afraid of them, though. They are right. <laughs> You know, a little saber rattling. It's, uh, you know, it's it's really uh, if you if you look at the true cause and effect of globalism, dude. It's like uh, at this point, it's just fear. <laughs> you know, Global there's no need to have fear. Fear it's, not. It's just a tool, and that's that's a that's the bottom line. I don't want to get political, but it's just a tool. Fear not. We had a nice pullback on that big uh, that big flag. Yes, we did. And Tesla's starting to scoop up now. If it pushes, like I said, if it pushes that liquidity zone, it'll break out quick. It's not going to be slow. Yeah. Same with Amazon. Intangible. And same with Spy. Yep. Just the intangible of Powell. Ranger yeah. Powell. That's it. And, um, oh, man, there was, there was another video out uh, <laughs> that puts, puts Jay Powell in a different perspective, too. And, you know, that's the whole... Uh, what do you call it? The um, the payroll spiral. Uh, Sounds uh, like a versus, spiral general. Versus inflation, it, it's it's just essentially a different outlook on it. Um, you know, it's keeping the little man down is is what people are seeing it as. But yeah, pff, you know, it, it's not a tax problem. It's not a political problem. It's a government spending problem. Let's just face it. <laughs> you know. <laughs> No one, no one really agrees on the issue anyway. So it's just political sh- stuff we don't want to get into. None of our business. We just trade the market. But the advantage is knowing about how all that stuff is kind of flowing around back and forth in the background and how opinions change on it and, and gathers one side or the other. That moves the market too. So keep your thumb on that. Don't get political. Don't get lost in the rabbit hole. But... Just kind of keep an eye on what the what the talking heads are saying when they when they come and step to the mic, and know that it has a dramatic effect on the market sometimes. And we've seen that repeatedly. When Jay Powell takes the mic, the market freaking moves. It does it doesn't have a side. It just does movement. You know, it doesn't have to go one way or the other when he picks up the mic. But we know typically we can depend on some real quick price action when he does. Absolutely. Yeah, the the balloon thing with China, I, <laughs> dude. They, I don't think they've seen anything that they haven't already seen with satellites. This is just a distraction. If that, it got everybody talking about it while something else was going down. I can almost promise you that. <laughs> it's like, hey, look at this hand. It mis- misdirection. Let's just call it that. All right, so um, where was I and stuff, man? I got kind of lost. Price action, just kind of slow, grindy, choppy this morning. You know, that, that opening was just garbage, right? But it's it's really a big part of a, a setup. Look at it just perspectively. It kind of looks like a rounding bottom, but it's not the bottom of a trend. It's the bottom of a channel. It's nasty looking, but there is a channel here. And this is a this is where the fan lines come into play. Where does this line come from? And why did it meet here? There's nothing supporting it. Usually a trend line is going to be traditionally three points of contact before you can make an a consideration for it being a trend line. That's why it's a fan line. Now you've got a trend line. It's contacted. It's been a point. It's been touched. So when we talk about fan lines versus trend lines, there is a difference, but they do have the same function. Um, yesterday I was joking around in our in our uh, Discord server. When this opened, I drew one line. I said, 
we have one line. With one line, we can determine what the price action was going to do, and we did. Let me go to a five minute, I'll show you what I mean. You know, we had this line down. We knew that that was going to be a reactionary point. Broke out big here, came back right to it. Okay, came down, broke through it, had a temporary pause, ran back through it. That was one line. And then I threw up a, uh, a, um, a gif of uh, the hound from Game of Thrones. I said, I sh I'll take two chickens. <laughs> so I drew a second line. I, I'll take two lines. Now I've got something. Here's your fan line. All right. So then when we had the second line, we realized that it was one effect, two effect. Where's the range? The range got bigger as time went on. And sure enough, it eventually exceeded that line. It knocked on it one, two, three times, tested, and boom, went through it. Didn't want to be there. From the five-minute candles, we could in, you know, install yet another liquidity zone. Sure. We have a wick right here. That's where a bunch of limit orders took place. There was an imbalance. Price changed rapidly. That's what makes those wicks. <clears throat> okay. Established. Did we need to draw this here? No, because we saw the wick. We know where it goes. We know that price action will stop at it. That was the target for the break here. Okay, quick trade. Reverse, it goes back to it. I mean, you could take this with the reverse button trade. Go long here, flip your order, go short here. Boom. Done. You've captured that entire move up and down. Below that move, where is the one key point that you, you get when you have two lines that intersect in an expanding range, even though price isn't touching this down here? There's a regression line there. Okay, actually it's here. Anytime you have an old trend line extension, from whether it's a fan line or a trend line, extend them way out and then make a new line between them. Suddenly you've got a price target that is actually valid. So break back through here, momentum changed here, this pullback just gave you an opportunity to go short, right to about half that move between here and here. No problem. So that was a nice closing trade, you know, quick little bearish move. And then when it hit the bottom, if you wanted to, you could have uh, hit the reverse button here, but you would have been trapped in this wick for a minute going, oh, I'm losing. This is going south. <laughs> a little patience would have said, no, it's likely to return to the center because even though we have two lines here, and Stone calls this the subdivision, the in-betweens, there's a, there's a way to call it, but there's another target. And it's just another, it's another regression line. Yep. So back to here, back to halfway. And when you really think about it, this is just a series of measured moves. Finding the targets in a measured move is the key. So when you have a regression line, it makes it real easy. Okay, A to B. All right, back to, back to A, but not all the way, halfway to A. It's just a measured move either way you look at it. The way, the way you can trade it is what's important is because you know where these targets are just by drawing some lines. And it's like Stone was saying earlier, it's like, you know, Stone, you found a shortcut. You can take a tool with one click. You can do what takes me seven trend lines. <laughs> well, only because, like we said earlier, it, it's because we, you know, I can see it already, but I just needed something to measure me uh, to get those measurements quicker, to be able to make my decisions quicker. And when I discovered I could do that with this, that's what it does. But I have to know all that other stuff first. Right. Exactly. And that's the whole point. You I had to, to use all those indicators first, right? Yep. You have to know how the rest of the machine works in order to be able to drill down into the, the shortcuts or the small parts. That's it. Yep. So anyway, I know we're a bit a uh, bit short on this. We we do have to get off our YouTube channel in about ten minutes, so we got a couple of internal things to discuss, and then uh, move my internals are discussing things with me right now. Yeah, me too. Uh, <laughs> but we're 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 making some moves and push. Doing we're some, gonna push, doing some big things, and we've got big things in the future with with what we're doing here at Bullish Bears, and it's it's not just about us; oh it's gosh. about the community. 
and the future of that community. And that, that, that includes everybody in it, whether you're just visiting us on YouTube or you're visiting us in the Discord channel. There's some things in the pipe that are just going to blow you away. And uh, we're, we're building up some steam to that. We're putting things in place that make that happen. So it's, it's coming. We're, we're doing some really, really good things. So sound effects. <laughs> Stay tuned. Blow you away. <laughs> you can hear the wind. <laughs> well, you know, the wind cries, Mary. Yeah, there you go. Good song. One of my favorite artists right there. Oh, one of mine too. And it's just... Um, <laughs> I got stories about him too. And again, that's that's something you can examine. Like You can look at the music piece on that and you can get into every detail of, of every note the man hit and realize he's oh, a yeah. genius without even saying it. You can just see it. <laughs> but <laughs> oh. it's all part of a big motor. <laughs> and the, yeah. the whole motor is, is what has to be known to be able to even perceive that that level of genius yeah most of his songs were three chords yep and and the genius was just how easy it was <laughs> you know he was a genius in in a lot of ways yeah and he should have stayed home they put him on the road he wasn't a, he wasn't a road guy i'm the same no. way I, I i've i've read his life story anyway sorry you got me started yep. I'm down oh man Lane. we put music into Thank all you. this dude and I'm gonna go play music now. <laughs> it's a consensus. Um, I, I've gone around and kind of listened to other groups talk and stuff about trading, and it, it it blows me away that they all come to the same conclusion: musicians and mechanics have an easy time learning how to trade <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> because of the way they can perceive things. Yeah, yeah, that, that blew me away. Engineering minds, you know, mathematical minds too. That's it. But it's it's, it's both an art and a science, and I think that's. That's why the musicians see it, because we know we're playing with mathematical equations all the time. Everything we do is a mathematical right. equation. It's just that we don't have to think about it. Our lizard brain takes over, you know? Exactly. And, uh, and so when you start seeing, you know, and, and everything's based on audible patterns. Uh, and that's, that's why when I, when I looked at that and I heard that, it was very encouraging for me. But also for me, what encourages me is that, you know, I got, like I said, I have kids, and I have a son who doesn't play professionally. He plays great, but I, I've I've been able to take music and break it down into those pieces, and uh, and be and I've, I've I've taught beginners, you know, how to play things. And Jeremy, I could teach you how to play a guitar ride, and you would never believe you could play in uh, 20 minutes if yeah. I sat down with you, and you'd walk away and you'd go, "Holy cow!" Because it's simplistic. It's, right. It's it's all it is. It's just parts that you break down into simple pieces and um you know i had a friend of mine who was a mechanic and he taught me uh when my car died on the side of the road and i went and got him it was a 78 dodge plymouth dodge valori a musician you got to drive a station wagon oh of course and so uh and i was driving it and and the car died and i couldn't turn on i wouldn't turn on or anything and he took me back to that car he was 15 years older than me mm -hmm. and he taught me in that moment how to look and find the problem where to start first with the right. electrical problem and we started at the battery and we went to the cables and we went to where the cables cables the cables were connected and eventually he led it it led me to a ceramic ballast yep you understand that right oh yeah the ballast and the ceramic common ballast those. and it went out so i was thinking alternator and he took me in that moment and he showed me these steps. I was, I was a young man. I was about 19, uh, almost 20. I was probably 20 at that point. And I was impressionable. And I always look at everything and I said, wow, I can use that in life for problems. Yes. And so he showed me that. I showed him how to play bass. And uh, he became a professional musician and a um, good friend of mine. He died a few years ago. Uh, uh, we used these different things about mechanics and, and music. And I showed him the simplistics that I knew and he took that and he died after performing a jazz concert in Kansas City uh, and uh, uh, no in Irving Texas excuse me and he died right after he gave his greatest performance he actually walked outside and had a heart attack 
Oh my goodness. But his wife called me because we had been friends for years and wanted me to know. I taught him how to play bass to let me know, uh, you know, that, that, uh, he, he wanted me to know that she wanted me to know he had done his greatest performance because she knew I had taught him bass right. and that he had walked. He had just told everybody, wow, I think that was my greatest performance ever. Boom. He was gone. Man. So, uh, the moral of the story, learn how to do this and you'll have your greatest performance one day. Yeah. It might be your last, but it'll be great. <laughs> yeah, that's true. You'll go out. You'll go out with a, like a legend. Just killed. Everybody was looking for a moral in that story. I was, just, it's, I was reminiscing. I was, you know, having a moment. Yeah. Um, I got a question on, on the YouTube channel, and this is a great one. I get this all the time. Um, Wizard asks, is that a cup and handle on Tesla? The cup and handle pattern is is often misconceived, and this is where I, I like to to emphasize on that is misconceived. A lot of people think of it as a reversal pattern. It is not. The cup and handle is a continuation pattern. So, like a cup and handle would be if if you have a bull trend and then you get that little pullback that looks like a little rounding bottom. It comes up to the rim, pulls back, and then the handle breaks out. That is a continuation pattern. Usually, it has a percentage of continuing the trend after that. And uh, Tesla did prove that to be true um, a while back. Amazon did it more recently with the earnings. Um, we had a couple of cup and handles in the daily or uh, in the five-minute charts that were just beautiful. And the follow-through on them was incredible. If you look at, uh, if you look at the Bullish Bears um, uh, Twitter feed, you'll see that we posted that twice in there. Um, and each time I replied, beautiful follow-through, beautiful follow-through. Those were cup and handles. Uh, if you go and look at the feed, they're still in there. You can still find them pretty quickly. And it, it shows just the rounding bottom. It came right up to the rim, and I said, watch, you know, the cup and handle. I, I called the alert out in our chat. We got it out to social media and showed about it. Those were cup and handles. Here's one here. That's a continuation in a trend right there. Bam. Broke out, little handle pullback, boom. And if you look at that, I can't really focus on it now. I can get the two-hour chart. Look at that so on a five-minute chart from uh, is, January 9th, and you'll see it. Yeah. Hey, Jeremy, is that chart I just posted on this pie cup and handle? So where where's the trend? Let me see. What, what do we got for days? Um, so that's the daily. That's the daily. That's the daily. That's the yeah. daily that, is, yeah. that is a cup and handle because there is a trend there from the bottom where you got that big double bottom from the daily. You got the trend. It pulled up, pulled back, 50% retracement. In this case, it was pretty deep. And then it had the wall, the cup, the, the side of the, the other side of the cup came to resistance, pulled back. There's your handle. The breakout is on. That's continuation. So that's why I took a bullish approach to a lot of earnings stuff. That's Q4, right on a chart right there with Spy. All all the, uh, the all the major companies did really good in Q4. I'm a little skeptical about what Q1 is going to provide, but Q4 shines like a star on that chart right there with Spy, and that's why I was I was changing my tune right around the bottom of that cup to hey i think we got a little bit of a bullish bias here um you know when before i was bearish as all hell because i saw that decline coming that was pretty easy to be bearish there but there's a time where you've got to take your opinion out of it and just look at what the chart's telling you and that's what i saw i'm like ha we can be bulls here so um if you look back at some of the other twitter feed stuff and i was like bullish is all hell about tesla same difference but that was a descending channel breakout with a 50 percent tracement retracement target in line easy easy to find that reversal um cup and handle we did have one a while back on tesla um one that i can evidence somewhere in here there's a time where i don't know if i go back far enough on a five minute chart i'll find one but uh long story short this today is not a cup and handle. It's more of a rounding bottom. So we've had not really a bullish trend going into this. Not really a full uh, full pullback, right? So we'll look at the 15-minute chart. Now we can also look at the SPY from a Keltner perspective. We are hitting the weekly, the top. We hit the top of the weekly Keltner right. on the SPY. And and that got rejected. So yeah, we so, can we can see it reverse here for sure. 
because the cup and handle is has already completed its measured move to the upside as well. That's where it hit that upper Keltner channel. So that same yeah, that same chart that I just posted now with a Keltner view. At some point, is the naked is good. So we, if you look at that Keltner view, it's the same exact chart. I just posted on our channel there. If you look at it, we hit the top of the weekly Keltner, which is the top bars right there. We rejected and we came back into the Keltner again. Right. So that can create that little slingshot, right, to push out of the weekly. That's it. So it did push out of the weekly and it got rejected one more time. So we can technically set up another cup and handle in this trend and then we can mm -hmm. start shooting for the third leg of the measured move so it'll be a, a three-phase measured yeah, move that's instead of two. What I was thinking is this build a smaller cup and handle probably tracing back to like 401 right before it shoots up right and I, I that's funny you should say 401 because I have a, a key pivot at 402 as well that stands well, 4170, out 4170 is the level that I had on ah. so Two right there. Boom. I I always I always uh I always round them. <laughs> so there's a liquidity yeah. zone right in there. Oh yeah, I see the fifty on yours too. So yeah, so I mean you can see you can see by posting those clean chart and side by sides like how they they're telling similar story, right? Right. So. I'm I'm not saying that Tesla's bearish at this point. I'm saying this is uh this is not a cup and handle, this is a rounding bottom. And if you look even closer, you'll see it's actually double bottom. You can see this is an inverse head and shoulders kind of. But more or less you look at the trend, it rounded off that bottom and, and now it's trending out. So it's it's a rounding bottom from a bearish trend from the opening. And that's the the other part of it is context. Where in the chart time frame is this? occurring because you can get these patterns on every time frame I mean right down to a five second time frame I can see patterns right so here's like a bull flag it went for half the move right up here to 4 10 70 and backed off okay that was easy um, you know you can see this is a pullback from a bullish trend right here this is a very small cup and handle right here there's your your up the rim of the cup pulled back and continued on pull back again to the rim of the cup and continue to big move, right? So that stuff's all all prevalent to know that what the patterns are in context is more important than the patterns themselves sometimes. So when you see it in a time and know what it is, so cup and handle, it's a continuation pattern. That's the context. Where is it in time? That's the other part of the picture. And then when you go and look at the, the SPY daily and weekly chart, we're in that upper Keltner bounced. We've got potential to push on through. And then and, and if you look at the lower Keltner, it's curled up. So it, it's an acceptable move, right? So it's all about context of time. Well, how long, how many days or weeks is this going to accumulate until we get into to figure out what the Q1 data is trying to sell us? That's where we got to wait for the rest of the pattern to shake out. So if we see this thing turn into a cup and start to go back up the cup wall, yeah, we can call it that. We can call it continuation and say, okay, well, we can be bullish for the third leg of the measure move. So look at that Tesla. So one of the things that I started observing as I played around with Keltners is the weekly and the monthly Keltners. So if I take a month, the bottom on that right there, the big, you know, big blue area, that is the monthly Keltner. Right. Tesla literally dropped below the weekly Keltner. And it shot it right through monthly, it. it. It breached the monthly Keltner a little. And then at the 101 level, when it hit that 101 something, it just reversed and it shot up and it shot up $97, right? Yep. Right back into the monthly Keltner, into the weekly you know, above the daily, it's like, now the question is, are we going to hit the 228 area, which is the top of the weekly? Or do we go back down a little to the 160s 
before we, you know, continue going up. The the logical thing for, and that's almost a parabolic trend because you got a big ass gap in the middle of that too, where it just rocketed up. Um, mm -hmm. The remarkable thing is that typically when when something goes parabolic like that, it's it's got to have a correction. And you got to decide, is the correction going to be an accumulation and then continuation? Or is the, uh, the correction going to be a pullback? And in this case, we kind of have both with Tesla. So let's go to a two-hour chart. All right, we've got this parabolic move out. There's our channel resistance. That's the line where it broke, and there's your gaps. Okay, there's all a series of measured moves. And it played with every pivot and every liquidity zone in between here and there. No problem. But this... It is a nice strong trend, but it's not very healthy. Like, see here, it went two bars straight up and then broke over. That is a healthy pullback. It's strong. It's still continuing that trend. Here's another one. Strong pullback, continuing the trend. So here we expect accumulation. So ideally, we see this con continue sideways for a couple days before it actually cracks that $200 bill. But when it gets through that little thin band of resistance here, that's the liquidity zone right here that I have marked, that move will be fast. So whether it accumulates a couple days or a week, once it crosses that threshold, it's going to just smoke its way to 207. And then you start the first set of that move to 220. That just becomes one leg. Expect consolidation around 207 and then a move to 220 for a measured move up. But it's a, it's a series of if this then that. Yeah. So Powell is speaking already. Uh, twelve forty, I think it is. Oh yeah, I thought it was noon. Um, that chart's pretty flat, so I would say he's not at the mic yet. <laughs> well, I'm starving. Yeah, I gotta. I gotta sign off and get some stuff done too before I, uh, uh, af well, after I go eat, I gotta eat something too. I'm starting to, I've been fasting my breakfast lately. So like by this time of day, if, if, uh, if I continue going on, my brain will turn into mush, but also I'll start like, I'll start getting the shakes, dude. It's just, I gotta eat. <laughs> yeah. I don't have my first meal until 11 central. Yeah. No. Cause I don't, I don't eat breakfast. It is not the most important meal of the day. <clears throat> I find I function better when I fast breakfast. I really do. Yeah, me too. If I eat, if I eat in the morning, I get lazy. Yeah, you just get sluggish because it takes energy to consume that that uh, that food. You know, you got to break it down. Anyway, I'm gonna kick it off of YouTube. Thanks for joining us, guys. Um, you know, we can we can say the cliche things like you know, ring that bell, like like and subscribe, and it certainly helps the channel. We do appreciate that. Um, the, the only thing I would ever ask, really, though, is is talk about us, dude. Go out and talk to your friends, talk to your peers, or anybody you trade with, anybody you talk trading about. Kind of just, hey, check this video out. You know, tell your friends. That's all I can say, just as humbly as I can. And we appreciate you guys joining us. We, we actually love being able to get out there in front of people and just show the world what we do on the inside. And uh, there's more coming. So we'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a wonderful evening. And, uh, you know, Stay frosty, stay nimble, and uh, trade smart. See you guys.